Hey guys, it's Sagar and in this video, I am going to compare the cameras on the iPhone 16 with the ones on the iPhone 15 and iPhone 14. Now if you are confused between which of these three phones to get and your decision comes down to the cameras or if you are just trying to see where does the camera upgrades on the iPhone 16 put it in comparison to the iPhone 15 and 14 you have clicked on the right video. Now this part of the video and overall introduction is also shot on the rear main cameras on these three phones. Even the audio is being recorded internally and I'll be switching between the audio from these three phones so you can see which one is doing it the best. The main camera on the iPhone 14 gets a 12 megapixel sensor whereas the one on the iPhone 16 and 15 get a 48 megapixel sensor. The ultra wide cameras on all of them have 12 megapixel resolution but the one on the iPhone 16 is a brand new one and it gets a slightly wider aperture. What it means is in theory it should be taking slightly better looking images. It also gets auto focusing abilities which means you can get extreme close up shots with it which is a first for a non pro iPhone. We have over 90 image and video samples from each of these phones to look at. The difference between some of the images might be very apparent but in some of the other cases it must be a bit discreet. So to notice each and everything that I am trying to show you guys please make sure to watch this video in the highest resolution that your device supports and possibly on the biggest display that you might have. By the way, everything that you have seen until now is still being recorded on the main rear cameras on these three phones. So please let me know in the comments which one do you think did the best. Anyways, without wasting any more time, let us get straight to the image and video samples which are shot during the bright daytime. Now it was a very nice T14 camera samples. There was a bright blue sky, lots of clouds passing by and plenty of sunlight to make these shots look amazing. I think all three phones can take very detailed shots in these lighting conditions. All of them make the scene look pretty much as I could see them with my own eyes. It's great to see the iPhone 14 holding on so well in comparison to the iPhone 15 and 16. It just gets a 12 megapixel main camera whereas the other two are taking images with their 48 megapixel main sensors and binning all that information down to a 24 megapixel shot. If I started to zoom in on these shots, as expected we will start seeing more details in the images from the iPhone 16 and 15. Another small difference that some of you might have picked up on is that shots on the iPhone 14 look a bit cooler compared to the other two iPhone 15 and 16 have a slight warm look in their shots which was actually there when I was taking these images as it was a very sunny day. That being said, this difference is a bit hard to notice if you don't know what you are looking for. Now this is an indoor shot of a mirror which is reflecting a painting that is on the opposite wall. I did not tap to focus on any of these phones, just pointed these cameras and took the shot. iPhone 14 has everything in focus and on the other two the circular border of the mirror is in sharp focus while reflection of the painting is slightly blurred out. This is because the painting is actually at some distance so the iPhone 15 and 16 blurring it out is exactly what I was expecting. But the iPhone 14 doesn't have as big of a sensor so it can't show the depth in its shots that accurately. That being said, I showed these shots to few of my friends and all of them liked the one from the iPhone 14 as everything appears to be in focus in its image. Now here's how all of them handle the skin tones in these outdoor, slightly overcast conditions. Overall shots from all three look very similar with the iPhone 15 and 16 having a bit warmer tones. If you look closer, iPhone 14 tried to bring up the shadows slightly more to make the face appear slightly brighter. Whereas the other two did not try to do that and they tried to let there be some contrast in the face because of how the light was at that time. Now these are very minute things and I'm sure I am noticing them because I am consciously looking for differences between these images. But just while looking at these images and not thinking too much, I think all three have done an excellent job. And again I am really surprised by how well the iPhone 14 is holding up against the iPhone 16 and 15. Now if you don't like the look of the skin tones or some other colors in these shots, all three have photographic styles which will let you tweak the look of the shot according to your taste. But the iPhone 16 takes the photographic styles to a whole new level. To begin with, it has a lot more styles to choose from and you can even fine tune each of these individual styles even further to get the colors to look exactly how you like them. So much more advanced photographic styles is one of the things that separates the iPhone 16 from the other two. So far, other than having more advanced photographic style options, we have not seen the iPhone 16's main camera take a lot better images in this comparison, especially when compared to the iPhone 15. Even in these shots, all of them seem to have captured similar overall colors, with just the ones from the iPhone 15 and 16 having slightly warmer look due to the bright sun as I mentioned before. The yellow color of this scooter looks a bit brighter in the shots from the iPhone 14, whereas the actual color was how you could see it in the iPhone 16 and 15's images. I took this shot in one of the stores and there were warm lights around. So we see the images from the iPhone 15 and 14 being much warmer and even the shadows are much darker in the iPhone 14's shot. But the iPhone 16 tried to capture the right white balance so you can see the actual colors of the blue, pink and the green boxes in its image. Now depending on how you like the colors in your images to be, you may like or hate the approach that the iPhone 16 took. It did a similar thing in this next shot as well. If you prefer to have the colors in your images look exactly how you could see them with your own eyes then you won't like what the iPhone 16 is doing here. 
but if you like to have the correct colors and fight balance in your shots, then you might actually prefer the colors from the iPhone 16. Color is a personal choice and everyone perceives color in a slightly different way. So really, there is no right or wrong here. Just go with the one whose colors look the best to you. For me, I feel all of the shots are looking really good and I'm honestly starting to wonder that does one really need to spend the extra amount on the iPhone 16 if the other two are taking just as good looking images at least so far. Now whenever I'm shooting these image and video samples, I don't want to carry around these phones in some bulky cases but at the same time, I want them to be safe and not gather any scuffs and scratches. That is where TAC, our sponsor for this video comes in. They make amazing super thin cases for your smartphone and this is their new standard case 4.0 for the latest iPhone 16 lineup. It comes in arctic frost and granite frost colors. These cases barely add any weight or bulk to your phone while covering all the sides and buttons. The camera module at the back gets a very pronounced lip which makes sure that your camera lenses or even the metal rings around it will never touch any surface. There is even a cutout for the camera control button so you can reach and use it just as you normally would. And even the display gets a bit of protection as there is a small lip at the front. Now at 0.7mm, this case is extremely thin and it is actually translucent. Despite of that, it is pretty tough as well. TAC has used new materials for this 4.0 series case which feels much tougher and durable. Now this combo feels really good in the hand, almost like you are using the phone without a case on it. Because they are so thin, they work flawlessly with MagSafe accessories. But if you want enhanced magnetic strength, you can go with the MagSafe Plus magnet accessory for that added peace of mind. Now if you are someone who doesn't drop your phone and you like to use it without a heavy and bulky case, but you still want to add a thin layer around to protect it from everyday scuffs and scratches, these TAC cases are perfect for you. Head over to TAC's website from the link in the description and use the code displayed on your screen at checkout to get a discount on your order. Coming to the HDR shots. It is a known fact that for a few years from the iPhone 12 to iPhone 14, the dynamic range on iPhones was not all that good. But Apple finally managed to get it right on the iPhone 15 with Smart HDR5. We see the same Smart HDR5 algorithm on the iPhone 16 as well. That combined with the newer image processing on the A18 chip makes the iPhone 16's images look the best out of these three. iPhone 14 has the shadows a bit too dark. 15 managed to bring up the shadows more, but at the same time, its image also has a bit of green tint in the grass. Again in this shot, the 16 has managed to handle the shadows and the brighter parts of the image best and it is also showing the most accurate looking colors of all the three. While the iPhone 14 still doesn't bring up the shadows as much as the other two and the 15 just has this green tint in the overall shot. I believe this green tint could be easily fixed in the editing app. But right now, we are looking at which of these phones could take the best shot out of the camera which in this case is the iPhone 16. For some reason, we see these same things repeat over and over again whenever these phones were in HDR like situation. Here, even the iPhone 14 is having a slight green tint in the shot. Look at the floor or the walkway. The actual color was like in the shot from the iPhone 16 and the other two just made it look completely different. In this shot, I would say all of them did well. Shadows are the darkest from the iPhone 14 but they are not completely crushed and even though there is a slight green tint in the image from the iPhone 15, it doesn't spill over to the blue sky so it is not very obviously apparent like in some of the previous shots. For this image, I think I actually prefer the one from the iPhone 15. There is a slight green tint but it has brought up enough shadows and also managed the highlights really well. Whereas the iPhone 16 in this particular case made the overall shot look a bit too processed for my liking. For the close-up shots, all three again do a really good job. This bunch of flowers were moving a lot because of the wind but all of them did amazing to freeze the frame and the complete bunch is in tad sharp focus in all of the shots and the background is nicely blurred out. We can see a slight difference in the colors here but in these set of images we are focusing on the close-up abilities. I am surprised to see the iPhone 16 and 15 being able to get just as close to the subject as the iPhone 14. Both these phones have bigger 48 megapixel sensors so their minimum focusing distance should be slightly more or you might have to be an inch or so further away from the subject for their main cameras to set the focus on a nearby object. I don't see that being a case here so a big thumbs up to Apple for that. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you feel like you need to be a few inches closer to your subject, you can zoom in up to 1.2 or 1.3 times and your close up shots will turn out just the way you want them. Again, let me take a moment to appreciate Apple here. Even with the new phones having launched, they are still improving the cameras on their previous iPhones. I mean, just look at the images from the iPhone 14 here. They look just as good as the ones from the iPhone 16 and 15. Yes, the background is a bit more blurred out in their shots since they have physically larger sensor but overall these close-up shots look almost identical from all the phones. If you want to get even closer to your subject, then the iPhone 16 has a new trick. As you move close enough to your subject, you get this macro shooting option and when you enable this, you can get incredibly close to your subjects and take these amazing looking macro shots. With this added ability of shooting macro shots, the dual cameras on the back of the iPhone 16 gained more functionality and at the same time became more versatile. 
I am glad that Apple is giving this feature on the regular iPhone 16 as well, since this is now one of the differentiating factors between it and the previous iPhones. Now these macro shots are being captured with the ultra wide angle lens. So although the center of the frame is in perfect sharp focus, the edges around the frame are pretty soft. So be mindful of that when you are trying to take these macro shots. Since the ultra wide angle lens doesn't have the biggest image sensor or the widest aperture, you will get the best looking macro shots if you are shooting outside or in a lot of light. None of these phones get a telephoto lens, but all of them will let you zoom in digitally. iPhone 16 and 15 even have a dedicated 2x zoom button on the viewfinder right next to the 0.5x and 1x button as if these two phones really have a third lens option, but they don't. When you press the 2x button on these phones, they crop in on the middle 12 megapixel part of the much larger 48 megapixel sensor and capture this digitally zoomed in shot. Apple says these 2x zoomed in shots on the iPhone 15 and 16 are almost as good as the 12 megapixel 2x optically zoomed in shots. But in the end, it is still digital zoom like on the iPhone 14. But since the sensors on the iPhone 15 and 16 are bigger, its 2x zoomed in images seem to have a slight advantage. When we look at these images side by side, from this far, all seem the same. Well, except for some of the other things like we saw before, like the colors being slightly more natural in the iPhone 16's image and the shadows being a bit darker from the iPhone 14 and so on. But as we zoom in on these images even further, ones from the iPhone 15 and 16 do seem to have slightly more details and information in them. Just like the macro mode on the iPhone 16, this 2x zoom option is a nice feature to have and it makes the dual cameras on the back of all these phones feel a bit more rich in terms of features. I would say 2x shots look the best on the iPhone 15 and 16, but anything beyond that and the sensor just starts introducing too much noise in these images. So I feel it is best to stick to the 2x option on all of these phones, especially in indoor lighting conditions like this one. Here, again I feel the iPhone 16 did better as it captured the actual color of the scene. iPhone 15's image is also looking pretty good but the iPhone 14 just added too much green tint in the entire shot. iPhone 16 and 15 get 48 megapixel sensors for the main camera, but as I mentioned before, they capture 24 megapixel bin shots by default. If you want to capture high resolution shots, both of them give you the option of taking full 48 megapixel shots as well. And here are how they compare against the 12 megapixel ones from the iPhone 14. From this distance, I believe it is next to impossible to tell if any of the phones have captured more information in their shots. You will have to zoom in at least 6 to 7 times to notice the extra bit of details in the shots from the iPhone 15 and 16. Now once we zoom in so far, we start noticing iPhone 14's images having much less details compared to the other two. But there is no difference in the details in the shots from the iPhone 15 and 16. If you need to zoom in so far to notice the difference between these images, I think it is best to stick to the default 12 megapixel mode on the iPhone 14 and 24 megapixel shooting mode on the iPhone 15 and 16. The high resolution shots are 3 to 4 times larger in terms of file size filling up the internal storage on your phone very fast and these images also take longer to capture and process as there is a huge amount of information to deal with. It is a difference of just a few macro or nanoseconds but sometimes you do notice it even on the iPhone 16. I think the only time you should shoot in the 48 megapixel mode on the iPhone 15 and 16 is when you are trying to capture some landscape or architecture and you might want to zoom in on some part of the image later on maybe to check out some intricate details. In all of the other cases, just stick to the default resolution on all these phones. Coming to the ultra wide cameras, all of them get 12 megapixel sensors behind this lens. iPhone 16 gets a newer sensor with f2.2 aperture, whereas the other two have f2.4 aperture. In theory, this means the iPhone 16 should be capturing slightly more light and information with its ultra wide angle camera. But we don't notice those extra bit of details in the bright lighting conditions. Any change due to the slightly wider aperture will be only visible when we move to lower lighting conditions. And right now, the wide shots are looking pretty similar from all these phones. While the center of the frame in all of these wide shots is in sharp focus, due to the nature of the wide angle lens, the edges of the frame are a bit softer from all the phones. And you must be seeing slightly less noise in the darker parts of the image from the iPhone 16 and this is thanks to the wide aperture as it helps letting in more light onto the sensor. You can get a lot more in the ultra wide angle shots compared to the normal lens, but you should know that images coming out of these cameras don't have nearly as many details as the main camera. So whenever possible, instead of switching to the ultra wide angle lens, if you have the space, just try walking a few steps away from your subject and clicking the image with the phone's main camera. Now we come to the portrait shots. We are almost at the halfway mark in this video and now for the first time I am starting to notice a clear difference between the shots on the iPhone 16 and the other two. As you can see, iPhone 16 managed to capture the skin tones and overall colors so well, whereas the other two had a clear green tint in the entire shot. Again in this shot, iPhone 16 is showing the most accurate colors. Now these are portrait shots and by this point, the edge detection from all of these cameras is near perfect. Now these are shot at f3.5 aperture and if you want your portrait shots to look the most natural, start shooting your images at an aperture value of something between f3.5 to f5.0. 
On the iPhone 15 and 16, whenever you have people in the frame, both the phones start recording depth information as well. So if you forget to switch to the portrait mode while taking images, you can still turn that shot into a portrait mode with just a couple of taps. You don't get this option on the iPhone 14. Honestly, other than the slightly better looking skin tones and colors, I am not seeing any other major differences in the portrait shots on these phones. And I believe you can easily get rid of the green tint in the images from the iPhone 14 and 15 in the editing app, which makes me feel like the iPhone 15 is the one to go for between these phones. The iPhone 16 doesn't seem to be doing anything out of the ordinary to make it pull way ahead of the other two, or at least the iPhone 15 in this comparison. Until now, did you guys notice any major differences between these images? If you did, please let me know in the comments iPhone 16 and even the iPhone 15 can take duet zoomed in portrait shots. Somehow these digitally zoomed in portrait shots also have the background compression like you would get when you are using an actual 50 or 85mm lens. These zoomed in portrait shots look good from both the phones and again the edge detection is on point. They can use a bit of further refinement for sure, but even now I don't feel there is a lot to complain about in these portrait shots. Some of the things like the way they capture colors and contrast is still just as we saw in previous images, but other than that. The zoomed in portrait shots are looking top notch from both the iPhone 15 and 16. Now many people don't know this, but you can go even further and take 3x zoomed in portrait shots with both these phones. Apple doesn't give this option directly or even talk about it, but when you are in the portrait mode hit the 2x button and then pinch to zoom even further and you will now get to the 3x portrait mode option. These images again look amazing from both the phones and so much better than the 1x portrait mode shots on the iPhone 14. This is about 78mm focal length which is close to the 85mm focal length which is the most preferred lens for most professional photographers for taking portrait shots. That is the reason these portrait shots are looking so good and amazing. Just make sure you are taking them in well lit areas. In the end, these are digitally zoomed in shots. So the faces in these are not as sharp as in the ones from the 1x or even 2x zoomed in portrait shots. But even if that is the case, I have started taking my portrait shots in the 3x zoomed in mode on the iPhone 16 as many of the times I just can't tell that they have less details in them without zooming in. Just like portraits of people, you can take portrait shots of objects as well with all these phones. Again the colors are the most accurate from the iPhone 16, but I believe the iPhone 14 has got a lot better with the edge detection over the last couple of years with some software updates. I don't think it was this good at detecting the edges when I first got it or even when I compared it against the iPhone 15 last year. But this time, we can barely tell a difference between the edge detection between these phones. All seem to do really well even with small objects like this one. And if I'm being honest, this particular shot looks almost identical from all three phones. Now in certain challenging conditions like this one, we see the iPhone 16 doing slightly better with the edge detection. Look at this part of the oil bottles. The lighting is tricky, object is very small and the background is also very busy. But despite of all of that, iPhone 16 managed to detect the edges accurately and colors in its shot are also looking the most soothing and accurate. That brings us to the images which I took in indoors, artificial and lower lighting conditions. As we get to these lighting conditions, the camera which has the biggest MS sensor and good stabilization is usually the one that ends up taking the best looking shots with the least amount of noise. Last year, when I compared the cameras on the iPhone 15 with the ones on the iPhone 14 and 13, we saw clear differentiation between the images since the iPhone 15 brought a huge new image sensor. But this time, we are not seeing that big of a difference between the images from the iPhone 15 and 16 since both of them have pretty much the same image sensor behind their main cameras. There is however a difference in the way that all of them show the colors or the white balance in these lighting conditions. Here we had warm lights on the counter and behind it and slightly less warm lights where I was and we can see that clearly in the iPhone 16's image, while the other two made the complete shot look warm. Here again, the iPhone 16 captured the most accurate colors. There were some yellow lights on my left side and you can see some of that light reflecting on the car's surface as well. For some reason, iPhone 15 captured the least amount of light in this particular shot. Now this shot looks identical from all three at first, but very quickly you will start to realize that the iPhone 16 captured the most light. And if I zoom in on the furthest pillar with the text on it, you can also see that it has the sharpest text, whereas the iPhone 14 has the most amount of noise in its shot. You can even look at this exit sign, it is looking the best in the shot from the iPhone 16. This seems to be the trend for all of the artificially lit shots. All might appear the same at first, but a little more attention and you will notice the iPhone 16 capturing the most accurate colors with great contrast levels. And it also has the least amount of noise in these situations out of all three. As we get to even lower light, again the iPhone 16 has the brightest image of all and it also manages the noise levels and colors the best. Images from the other two also look good, especially from the iPhone 15. But since this is a comparison, we will have to find out which one did the best, which in these conditions is the iPhone 16. Since the iPhone 16 and 15 have the same image sensor, the difference that we are noticing in their images is a result of their ISP. That being said, what I am talking about here are very subtle differences. 
and many people who are not too keen on the details might not even notice any of these differences. Yes, iPhone 14's shots are the darkest ones between the three and it also captures relatively the most amount of noise. But I believe we are noticing all these things because we have the images from the other two phones to compare it with. And on their own, iPhone 14's images look pretty good as well. In certain cases, it is even harder to differentiate that which of these three phones did the best, like in this shot. As we get to even lower lighting conditions, image quality from all three phones starts to degrade and that is when all of them are trying to switch to the night mode. With the night mode turned on, all three again start taking amazing looking images even in lower lighting conditions. In some of these shots, there was very little light around and the iPhone 15 and 16 took about 1 second exposure time to capture this much light whereas the iPhone 14 consistently took 2 or sometimes even 3 second exposure time for most of these images. During this time, there is a big chance that the phone moves a little and in those cases, your night shots will turn out blurry. So I always prefer the phones which take the least exposure time for night mode shots, which in this case is the iPhone 15 and 16. Again as I zoom in, iPhone 16's image is the sharpest in terms of details and cleanest in terms of noise. But for some people, these things just don't matter and they don't even zoom in on any of their images. For them, the iPhone 15 or even the iPhone 14 seems to be doing a very good job. Apple said that they have some kind of new lens coating on the main camera of the iPhone 16, especially to reduce the lens flares. But if I'm being honest, we don't see any of that working in these shots. Yes, the slightly rounded lens flares around the light source as we can see in the shots on the iPhone 14 and 15 are absent in the shots on the iPhone 16, but we still see these small light orbs in its images and these are still very much an issue and the new lens coating has done nothing to reduce those. The wide cameras on all three phones can take night mode shots. Usually I don't switch to the wide lens when the lighting conditions are anything less than ideal and the only time I take low light wide shots is for these camera comparison videos. As I mentioned at the start, iPhone 16's wide camera has a hair wider aperture and that combined with the ISP on the A18 chip makes its wide shots look the brightest with least amount of noise in these conditions. It is also showing the most accurate looking colors whereas the iPhone 14 has a bit of green tint in some of the night mode shots. If the sun has gone down, I just suggest you guys to stick to the default main camera on all of these phones. Those ones end up taking much better looking images than the ultra wide angle lenses on any of the cameras. That brings us to the front facing cameras. All three have the exact same sensor behind this camera so the results won't be drastically different. Details are about the same from all three and the only difference that we might see is in how all three represent the skin tones. Out of these selfies, I feel like the iPhone 15 is showing my skin tone exactly how it is but the difference is very little so no matter which of these three phones you have, the selfies will turn out to be identical from all of them. This is true for portrait selfies as well. The edge detection might be slightly better from the iPhone 16 but not by a huge margin and this is something that can be improved by software updates on the other phones as well. Other than that, all the portrait selfies look almost identical. I would say have the F number set to something between F3.5 to F5.0 for getting the best and most natural looking portrait selfies from your phone. Now here's a video from the front facing camera of all these phones. You can see how they are handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I am walking around with them. Now all of them have the same front facing camera so the results might be pretty similar from all of them. Any difference that we might see is a direct result of their image processing algorithms. All of them can record cinematic videos with all of their cameras and this is what this video has been recorded at. The key to make these videos look good is to shoot them at a higher aperture number. This video is being shot at f7.1 and you can see the background is really nicely blurred out and even the edge detection is being handled really well from all of them. For the videos on the rear cameras, we already saw how they are at the beginning since the entire introduction of this video was shot entirely on the rear main cameras of these phones in different lighting conditions. Here's another stabilization test on the main rear cameras of all three phones. As you can see, all of them are doing a pretty good job. If you think you need even more stable videos, then there is action mode on all three which keeps the video footage rock steady no matter how much you are moving your phone. I feel like these three phones tend to overexpose the videos a bit so it would be best if you lower the exposure to minus 0.3 or minus 0.7 if you are planning on shooting your videos outdoors in bright sunlight. For the most part, I feel the overall videos are very similar from all three just with the colors being a bit more natural from the iPhone 16 and the 14 having the shadows a bit too dark. When you are shooting videos, you can switch between the lenses on all three phones. On the iPhone 15 and 16, you can do this even when you are shooting at 4K 60fps resolution. While on the iPhone 14, you can do that while shooting at up to 4K 30fps. It also goes only as far as shooting 3x digital zoom, whereas on the other two, the maximum digital zoom range is 6x for shooting videos. So those were all of the image and video samples which I had for you guys. And after looking at over 90 of these samples from each of these phones, I still don't think that iPhone 16 is way ahead of the other two. Yes, it takes better portrait shots in terms of colors and skin tones and it did slightly better when we got to lower light. 
and in most of the cases, we could see a difference in its and iPhone 14's images. But comparing it to the iPhone 15, I don't believe we saw a big enough difference other than the 16 being able to take macro shots, which is something that the iPhone 15 can't do. So back to the questions that you had at the beginning. Should you upgrade from the iPhone 14 to the 16 just for the cameras? The short answer is no. I mean you can, but I doubt most people will see a noticeable difference in their images unless they are comparing the images side by side. Because that is only when we start seeing some small differences in their shots. But I would say you guys could easily wait for another year before switching your phones. What about the iPhone 15 users? Well, if I'm being honest, you won't see any improvement at all by going for the iPhone 16. So please don't even think about upgrading. And for people who don't have either the 15 or the 16 and are trying to decide between them, if your decision comes down to the cameras, just go with the iPhone 15 and save yourself a lot of money. If you don't have any of these phones and are trying to decide between them, then again, you should go for the iPhone 15. I know the prices of the iPhone 14 are at all time low, but if you want good set of cameras, please spend a little extra and get the iPhone 15. After looking at all these image and video samples, what do you guys think about the cameras on these phones? And are you considering getting any of them for the cameras? Please let me know in the comments. If you are going to get any of these phones, I will really appreciate if you get them from the affiliate links in the description section. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Sagar and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.